Azure here and welcome to the workshop. Today I want to show you my latest uh, addition in terms of saddles. I've already shown you this on my Instagram account but today I want to go a bit more detail here. So these saddles are made in Slovenia by Burke Composites. So it's a kind of a boutique brand really and I don't really use too many boutique products but when it comes to saddles I think they're an excellent option. Uh, some people say that this is a true weight weenie product. Now that can be quite right although I didn't get them because of the weight savings that was not the primary option. But if you look at the saddle unlike some other super lightweight parts it doesn't really detract anything from its performance even though it's lightweight. So I've got uh, two models here, one of them in two different guises, so let's look at these uh, now. So on my Madone I have the Burke Dila saddle, which is basically kind of a new school, wide-nosed, pretty short saddle. What immediately struck me after unboxing this is actually how wide the thing is, and I thought well that looks a bit weird and I wasn't really sure that it's going to work with my narrow bottom and hips but yesterday I did my first long ride on it and I was completely blown away by how, how comfortable this thing really is. So what are the keys to that comfort? Well this is the padded version that I have here. I could have gone for the bare carbon version but uh, really I thought that it would be too slippery and not very practical particularly in the wet so I've got uh, the padded version even though there's actually very very little padding into it as you can see just a sheet of carbon probably different kinds of uh, layup on there and around two or three mil of padding and a cover on top of that so yeah pretty slick looking and previously I've had a dash saddle which was heavily padded and I got along very well with it. Although I have to say after this first impression uh, this came to me as much more comfortable. So the shape is really really flat both in this direction and laterally as well. Although there's a slight dip in here. What you can also notice is there's a ton of flex. This is all very thin. Flex is very very nicely which uh, gets rid of the road buzz and it has a super wide front end so even if you really go into that aero position uh, it's going to support you well if you look at it from this side it's pretty flat in here as well the padding isn't as grippy as I would hope to be that was kind of a drawback at first it felt really slippery but after an hour or so I got used to it I think uh, I never really had problems with saddle, pr saddle pre uh, pressure or discomfort for that matter but sometimes I did have problems with chafing but I think a low friction or a fairly low friction cover like this seemed to have mitigated that uh, so we'll see upon further riding what is vastly different is the stack height Dash saddles have really, really high stacks, so long rails. Uh, these are very, very flat, so actually I almost run into the problem of running out of seat post, but luckily it was just enough to get my saddle, he saddle height right without uh, opting for a longer post. The saddle itself, very wide, 60mm at the front, 160 in the rear, so much wider than I would normally use but for now it just works. I think the part of it is that we have so much contact area and surface area that the pressure everywhere is distributed very evenly and is very low. And I didn't have any back issues either. As I said very very comfortable, no hot spots, no anything so so far so good. Uh, options wise I've already mentioned the bare carbon and the padded version. You can also choose the type of rails you want. Now these I have here are the round rails. These are a bit lighter and I already had 
round rail uh, clamps because of the dash saddle, so that's why I, well, I opted for. And these are up to 85 kilos. The oval ones uh, that I have right here are up to 100 kilos. So this is the other uh, model, this is the Lupina. It's a bit more traditional looking, very similar to some Sele Italia saddles or that sort of thing. La uh, nice and large cutout, same basically as on the Dila. It's a bit narrower though, you can get this one in 132 and 150. Uh, I've yet to ride this, but the shape is pretty much identical. It's just that it's a bit, a bit uh, narrower and a longer nose, narrower nose, so might not be ideal in the super aero position. But this bike doesn't have anything like that, so uh, should work just fine. It's also quite similar to the Montrose Pro saddle that I had on here previously. So we'll see, but I think uh, it's going to be very comfortable. It's much more flexible than the Montrose, which was my issue with it. If you ride off-road and cyclocross, you really want to have a saddle with, with some give in it, and that one didn't have much, although the shape was pretty much spot on. Uh, here you can see the oval rails, very nicely finished. As I said, these are up to 100 kilos, add a couple of grams the weight of the saddle touching the weight these are both super super light so this uh, dealer saddle comes in 97 or 8 grams I've measured that and the lupina at 94 so stunningly light I would say and these are the padded versions remember for comparison the Montrose saddle that I've removed from here weighs something around 170 grams and pretty much all of the high-end traditional branded saddles weigh in that region so 150 to 180 grams this one is well almost half that so that's very good and as i said it doesn't detract anything from the performance and on my cross-country bike yet to be built or finished off with wheels i have the same lupina saddle that i have on the boon but in this version I chose for the round rails this should be a little bit more compliant which comes in handy on comes in handy off road and yeah basically I have the round rail clamps so that's that's why I went for these with the uh, round rails it comes up at just around 90 grams so stunningly light and good performance as well so as I said these saddles are made in Slovenia and I am lucky enough to be an official dealer for these in Slovakia so if you're interested then definitely send me a message and I can hook you up with some uh, if you want to know more about cycling equipment that I use and how I set up my bikes then don't forget to tune into the channel and subscribe it's all for today, thanks for watching and see you next time.